In this exercise, we will simulate on screen constructing a pentagon with a straight edge and compass. While we will not make an actual video of ourselves using a straight edge and compass, we will show the different constructions as if we are using a straight edge and compass. The key to the construction of our pentagon is the construction of the number negative 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 4, which is equal to cosine of 72 degrees. Precisely how is 72 degrees related to the regular pentagon? We all know that a full revolution around any point, such as the center of a pentagon, measures 360 degrees. Subdivide 360 degrees into 5 equal central angles, each central angle will measure 72 degrees. Furthermore, if the pentagon is inscribed within the unit circle, and let's say one of the vertices lies on the positive x-axis, then another vertex will have coordinates cosine 72 degrees and sine 72 degrees. We begin the construction of our pentagon by constructing a straight line, which we designate to be our x-axis. It doesn't have to be horizontal, as any line will do. We pick a point O on the line and designate it to be the origin. We set our unit length, or length 1, to be the length of our straight edge. Let the point 1 unit to the right of point O on the x-axis be the point A. Using segment OA as the radius for our compass, we construct the unit circle. Next, we construct the line perpendicular to the x-axis through the point A. To construct this perpendicular line, we center our compass at the point A and construct a circle of radius 1. Besides at the origin, the circle intersects the x-axis at the second point, which we call the point B. We use segment OB for the radius of our compass, and construct a circle of radius 2, this time centered at B. We then construct a circle of the same radius, but this time centered at O. There should be two points of intersection between these two circles. We call these two points, points C and D. Line CD is the line through A that is perpendicular to the x-axis. Keeping segment OB as the radius for our compass, we construct a third circle of radius 2, this time centered at A. This circle should intersect line CD at two points, which we call points E and F. Observe that points O, A, and E are vertices of a right triangle whose legs are 1 and 2. Therefore, the hypotenuse has length squared of 5. We use segment OA again, the unit length, as the radius for our compass. We construct an arc centered at E and intersecting segment OE. Let G be the intersection between this arc and segment OE. Since the length of segment EG is 1, the length of segment OG is minus 1 plus the square root of 5. We get a quarter of this length and we will have cosine of 72 degrees. So we proceed to bisect segment OG. Using segment OG as the radius for our compass, we center the compass at O and construct a circle with radius OG. We then center the compass at G and construct a second circle with the same radius. We label the points of intersection between these two circles as the points H and I. And so segment HI is a perpendicular bisector of segment OG. Let J be the point of intersection between the two segments. Then the length of segment OJ is half negative 1 plus the square root of 5. And so we just have to bisect a segment OJ. So we center our compass at O 
and construct a circle of radius OJ. We then center our compass at J and construct a circle of the same radius. Let the points of intersection between these two circles be the points K and L. Then, segment KL is a perpendicular bisector of segment OJ. And so if M is the intersection between segment OJ and segment KL, the length of segment OM is equal to 1 fourth negative 1 plus the square root of 5, or cosine 72 degrees. We need this length for the x-coordinate of a vertex of our pentagon. And so we construct a circle centered at O and with radius OM. This circle intersects the positive x-axis at a point which we call P. The point P has the same x-coordinate as two vertices of the pentagon we are constructing. These two vertices lie on the line perpendicular to the x-axis through the point P. We use segment OP as the radius for our compass and construct a circle centered at P. This circle intersects the x-axis at the origin and at a second point which we call the point Q. We then use segment OQ as the radius for our compass and construct a circle centered at Q. Using the same radius, we construct a second circle this time centered at O. These two circles intersect at two points that we call points R and S. And so line RS is perpendicular to the x-axis at the point P. Line RS should intersect the unit circle at two points. These two points of intersection are two vertices of the pentagon we are constructing. Incidentally, the point A is one vertex of the pentagon. We rename point A as the point P sub zero. We call the other two vertices as points P sub 1 and P sub 4, respectively. To find the other two vertices of our pentagon, we use segment P sub 0, P sub 1 as the radius for our compass and construct a circle centered at P1. This circle intersects the unit circle at two points of the pentagon. One of them is P sub 0 and the other one we call P sub 2. Maintaining the same radius for our compass, we construct a circle of the same radius but this time centered at P2. A point of intersection between this circle and the unit circle is the fifth and final vertex of our pentagon. We call this point P sub 3. The only thing that remains to be done is to show that cosine 72 degrees is negative 1 plus the square root of 5 divided by 4. We start with an isosceles triangle whose base angles both measure 72 degrees. The angles of this triangle should add up to 180 degrees and so the apex angle should measure 36 degrees. We suppose that the length of the base AB is equal to 1. We bisect the angle at A using a segment intersecting segment BC at the point D. And so we have two angles at the vertex A each measuring 36 degrees. And so angle ADB should measure 72 degrees. And so with two angles both measuring 72 degrees, triangle ABD must be isosceles. And so segment AD also has length 1. Now triangle ACD has two angles both measuring 36 degrees. And so triangle ACD must also be isosceles. So that the length of segment CD is also equal to 1. We denote the length of BD as x. Observe that we now have two similar or proportional triangles. One is triangle ABD 
and the other is triangle ABC, which is the original triangle. These two triangles are similar or proportional because they have three pairs of congruent corresponding angles. And so we compare ratios between corresponding sides. We take the ratio between the short side of the small triangle and the short side of the big triangle. We get x over 1, or x. This should equal the ratio between a long side of the small triangle and a long side of the big triangle. And so x should be equal to 1 divided by x plus 1. From this, we get the quadratic equation x squared plus x minus 1 equals 0. And applying the quadratic formula, we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 5 all over 2. Since x cannot be negative, x has to be equal to negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2. We proceed by locating the midpoint E of segment BD. Segment AE is the perpendicular bisector of segment BD because triangle ABD is isosceles. And so triangle ABE is a right triangle. Now segment BE is adjacent to 72 degrees, and its length is x over 2, because the length of BD is x. And so cosine 72 degrees is equal to x over 2, which is the adjacent side, divided by the hypotenuse 1, and so cosine 72 degrees is equal to x over 2. x being equal to negative 1 plus the square root of 5 over 2, Cosine of 72 degrees is equal to negative 1 plus the square root of 5 all over 4. 